But this doesn't really work when Hassan is abandoning the industry that he says I'm jealous of and he's trying to be as big as I am in the new industry that he's working in. You would never say to a trans woman, hey, you're male passing. That's like probably one of the most offensive things you could say <laughs> to a trans person. What I'm saying is that if I'm in a conversation with five people and four of them are dogpiling some person and then afterwards they're like, man, we shouldn't have done that. Oh, okay. I don't care. Don't really give a fuck. I don't care about that analysis. We'll see what you do next time. I don't think that just saying that I you say can disagree all you like. I cited you information that shows you didn't cite shit. You have no about fucking this. idea what the fuck you're citing. Oh my god! You're stupid you, to read the fucking you caught, cited. You caught on something. Yeah. Oh shit! Is this it? Did somebody find it? Did somebody find the meme? Um, Melina told me a relationship problem that she's had that I can empathize with sometimes. Um. So Melina says that she's generally, um, she does like poly relationships or open relationships exclusively, which I guess is what I do now. Um, but she said one problem that she's had with guys is that she's generally like very open and very chill with most stuff. But because of that, because she'll be with a guy and she's really chill and open with most stuff, the guy will sometimes ignore her thinking she's always going to be okay. And she says it feels kind of shitty because it's like, well, just because I'm like open and chill with a lot of stuff doesn't mean you can literally just like ignore me and expect me to be chill with everything. And I actually kind of noticed that that happens a little bit um, for me publicly. Um, I'm pretty sure that most streamers in my position over the past few days would have taken a few days off and had like a pretty big breakdown. Like there's been a lot of crazy threads and shit posted about me. So it's a little annoying when somebody like a song be like, oh, it feels like everyone's against me. It's like, Technically, dog, this drama doesn't even involve you. Like, you, you literally kind of sort of involved yourself. Um, like, nobody was talking about you at all. This was between me and Trihex. I went on that podcast alone. You're the one that jumped on the podcast to dogpile me with two other people. Like, why are you mad now that you've got some blowback, right? Like, I'm the one with, like, the, the multi-thousand comment threads going up. Like, why would you involve yourself and then get upset that people are like, Hassan said that you're tweeting across that girls because Hassan is, like, losing it, dude. I need to like chill on some of the Hassan stuff, I think. I, Cause there's like certain groups of people that I like, I try not to bully or harass or whatever. And I think Hassan is like, like mentally is like very hard to deal with a lot of this stuff. So with XQC's aggression towards you? I don't know. It feels like he actually does hate me. I thought, um, I thought he was just memeing on those streams before. Maybe he spent a lot of time around Hassan or something, or maybe, I'm not sure. I don't know. That was really weird last night. That was like really weird. You've said since the beginning that he's super insecure, right? No way he's handling being hated all that well. Yeah, maybe, but I mean like, I don't know, man. Fuck. Turning the speaker towards you now and screaming at you. Like, it's pretty dumb. Like, the threads coming up on Hassan, they're not even, like, digging shit up about his past stuff. It's literally him reacting to stuff right now. <laughs> it's just, I don't know. It's very funny to me. Like, he literally involved himself in this for no reason. Because none of this involves him. Podcast. And now people are making fun of, like, his reactions to things. Like, it's pretty dumb. Can you talk more about why Hassan is dumb? No, fuck off. Watch the desk slam clip. <laughs> Nothing I do is performative. So I'm not going to, for instance, um, I'll use Hassan as an example. I'm not going to talk to a black person like Trihex and say, hey, the N-word, it's always black. <laughs> what do you think black people? What a fucking liar, dude. What a fucking Weasley little What a liar, fucked up dude. day. What, what a, a fucked up day. Weasley little liar, dude. Holy shit, dude. Holy fucking shit, control. dude. Literally lying. Still lying. Nothing I do. I'm not talking to him again. You guys can call me a pussy all you want. There's literally no reason for me to ever talk to Destiny or about Destiny going forward after this. Like, a person who fucking treats me in the most disrespectful pa fashion, who treats me in my time with such disrespect when he is an insignificant motherfucker himself. Nope. Fuck the content. You guys can go watch him fucking cry about it all he wants. <laughs> that was two days ago, by the way. They can feel envy. That statement will trigger the fuck out of him. Yeah, go ahead. Tell him. I think he's upset that, um, even if I never, even if I never cultivate a following from this point on, I don't think Destiny will ever get to the level of relevancy I've gotten to outside of Twitch in the political realm, in any other realm. And that is a reality that frustrates him to no avail. Because deep down inside, he is a smart person. He is he picked himself up by his bootstraps. He did great things on the internet. Um he went through a period of introspection which seems to be unwinding. Um but the reality is he's never going to be like he's never gonna be more than what he is now. And I think that, that really frustrates him. The jealousy vector is interesting to hit up because a lot of people do harbor insecurities and jealousies, but this doesn't really work when Hassan is abandoning the industry that he says I'm jealous of and he's trying to be as big as I am in the new industry that he's working in. So like if anything, technically I would, technically this only makes sense if I would have flipped this around on him. Like Hassan is jealous that 
<clears throat> how would this attack look like for me? Oh, Hassan, um, you know, is really upset because he's worked at the Young Turks for so long, and rather than have the freedom to do the kind of content he wants to without getting scolded out by Daddy Chenk, he wishes he could be as big and as independent as I am on Twitch. And I think that he's deeply upset that he doesn't have the mental fortitude to make it on this platform like I do. And I think that's always going to bother, right? That, that's what the attack would look like for me. It's kind of interesting that he would attack me saying, I'm jealous while he's trying to make it like in my industry. <laughs> that doesn't really make any sense. Uh, he does have a bigger Twitter and Facebook account than me, though. That's true. Oh you no! What you oh, when he got <laughs> when he got caught. How you doing, bud? So Hassan, oh. hey Destiny, hey, right hey Destiny, How's my you mind showing them the full oh. context of the clip, buddy? While you're milking 18k? I actually wish I had the full context of the clip. Um, or I would have, I should have wound it back 20 seconds, um, because it was actually a third argument he was making. Um, he tried to pretend that that actually made it more consistent, but the argument in that trihex one, um, or, or one of the other ones that I missed like 20 seconds before, he was saying, well, it is okay, but only in historical contexts. So that would have actually been three different positions that his son held. I, it's funny that he thought that that would like make him better, but he had three different positions, not two. I thought he had, it was okay to say it, if it, in the right context, and it was never okay. But he had three. It's okay to say it if you're doing historical contexts. It's never okay to say it, and it's okay to say it when you have edgy humor. I actually wish I would have had that. I should have Hassan like proofread my manifestos next time. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I think it's I think it's the ultimate cowardice to fucking not own up your position, not own to your position that you're, like you're saying the n-word all the time, and fucking run away from that and say, oh no, I'm just telling three jokes. Is it not okay to say it in three jokes? It's literally the gamer bro uh, conversation, and then I say it all the time. I all <laughs> okay. <laughs> I briefly, I briefly thought of this, but I'm going to be totally honest with you. I'm going to be totally honest with you. The only reason I didn't do this is because I'm worried I would have gotten permaban instead of 30-day ban. If I was guaranteed a 30-day ban, I would have heavily considered this. I seriously thought um, at the end of my big 20,000 whatever viewer stream that I was going to be like, listen, guys, that's all I got. I'm glad it's been fun. Peace, ninjas. And then I was going to cut the stream. Um, this season, if I would have gotten a 30 day ban for that, it might have been worth it. <laughs> um, somebody, yeah, somebody pointed that out in a Reddit comment that it would have been a good way to end the stream. And then I could have come back and I was like, well, look, I think that was a pretty funny way for a white person. But I, I don't know. It was too, it was too spooky that I would get like a perma ban for it because, um, it would have been with, the, it would have been ninjas. Okay. With the soft day. Okay. We don't want to be too edgy. Oh, please. Yeah. Hey, you're, you're giving me yeah. great A content right now. Awesome. Literally, literally. Mm -hmm. literally it's easier just to f that's the that's the point and i never flip-flopped on my position and it's fucking disgusting that his audience keeps saying that i flip-flop literally it's easier just to fucking never say it in private if, if you're it, it, you know it, it, because your 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 logs might get leaked mm -hmm. what about his come town point though everyone who fucking brings up come town disingenuously is literally the stupidest people i've ever met okay, what's the come town point you got to fill me in on this. it is a podcast that no, no, I know what come to <laughs> pride themselves on One is a form of consumption? On not saying the N-word and doing everything but the N-word, okay? Mm -hmm. Which is hilarious because Destiny's position is I should be able to say it. Um, secondly, <laughs> so the come town is technically better than Destiny, okay? In that regard. Mm -hmm. Secondly, it's media consumption, okay? It's fucking media consumption. We're not talking about something that like literally you say and you defend your right to say in private. It is entirely different. Oh, I'm so fucking curious. So it's okay to listen to the N-word in private, but it's not okay to say the N-word in private, okay? What if I bring a friend over and I play for him as part of Come Town, the N-word in private? Is that okay? If that's okay, then if I quote like a Come Town skit to him that has racism... Is that okay or is that not okay? What are these fucking arguments? Holy shit! What what if I record myself saying it and then I just play that? What, okay, since we can consume media. Oh my god! Oh my god! Oh my god! Oh my god! Okay, ready? Here we go, guys. We're running on syllogism. Okay, if an action is harmful, it is more harmful if you repeat it. Okay, so doing a harmful action ten times instead of one time is worse than than doing the action one time. Okay, we can accept that. Media consumption, so hearing somebody else say the N-word or playing it on the N-word somewhere, that's actually okay, according to Hassan. What if we just make a recording of ourselves saying a racist word, so we, we commit the bad act one time, but then we have the recording, so anytime we want to make a racial joke in, like in private or whatever, we can just push the button and play the word back. Now, we did commit 
the morally wrong act one time. However, now that we have a recording of it, we're just consuming media when we play it, and now it's not bad when we do it a million times. <laughs> Holy shit. Hassan has it figured out because media consumption is totally fine. It doesn't matter what kind of media we're consuming. This is why, this is why the tru truly the biggest of brains are to be found on the left. So I had the same opinion since the start, despite the narrative Dustin's trying to create. The reason I'm making this is because of his newest Reddit post. Dustin's trying to make it sound like Hassan was too scared to admit his actual opinion until he pressured him into it one-on-one. -on -one. Here is a clip chimp to make it seem like Hassan was saying, if someone says the N-word in private, it's always implied they're racist. Don't worry, buddy. As long as do go and become a commie, it'll always be your friend, buddy. Now here he is, 30 seconds before that clip, where Hassan literally acknowledged there is a context where it's fine, and he's talking about someone's referring to another person's N-word. Let's listen. I don't know. Am I, am I, am I saying this like an actual... So my understanding is, if you go back earlier, what Hassan says is it's okay if you're like quoting a history book. I think that's what he says here. Racist person, if they're, yeah. if they're, they have yeah, I mean, yeah, first of all, okay, let me ask you this. Do you think anyone who says the N-word of the hard R in, in the context of like using it as a pejorative, not like you're reading fucking an old book or something, right. you're not, you're not, not like you're history. like, con not like you're quoting a historical document, but mm -hmm. you're saying you are an N-word with a hard R, haha, or like stop being an N-word with a hard R, haha. Like when you say that to someone in private, do you think that they're- Notice how, notice how Hassan is trying so hard um, because he's around a black person. He's trying so hard to avoid, like, what if you use it as a joke? The only two things he's presenting are, you can read it off as part of, like, a history book, or you can call a black person the hard R, right? That's the only- notice how he's too scared to tackle the comedy part, right? Like, what if it's part of a joke? Or racist or not? That's the question that, uh, that you should be able to answer here. In your heart, what, how do you feel? Because I do legitimately think that, like, if I heard and I know Destiny knows this as well. That's why he says like he doesn't say it around people who would get offended by it. That's why he doesn't say it around you, right? right. He wouldn't. He, would he use the N word? Oh, I like that. I like how Hassan like um, oh, this is actually I don't I I don't think Hassan is smart enough to do this like um I don't think Hassan is smart enough to do this like um, cognitively or or be cogniz cognizant of what he's doing. But this is like so smart, right? Um, so what Hassan is doing here is like he's painting me like in a in a very bad light where it actually looks like I'm intentionally trying to like lie about how I feel about Trihex, right? Like where he's saying like, this is why, so like he's saying like, oh, you know, Destiny has this feeling, that's why he doesn't do it around you, Trihex, because he knows that it's a bad thing to do around you, right? That's like a, a super fucking good, um, this is like a really good like isolation tactic, right? So oftentimes when you're trying to like, kind of like take over a person's mind, um, one of the ways you do this is you cut them off. I'm using like a lot of like, uh, I'm sorry, real quick, I'm using like a lot of like, I'm, I'm always framing this from the form of like, uh, kind of like emotional manipulation. So a lot of this sounds like really extreme, um, but like this is, this is like a tactic that people use. I don't think that it's like, quite as extreme as I make it sound sometimes. I don't want to give off that impression. But like, um, this is like a really common tactic that you employ when you're trying to isolate somebody from somebody else, right? Like, oh, um, so like, for instance, somebody might do this when they're talking about somebody's parents. Like, oh, well, your parents don't actually love you. They didn't do that thing for you. Or, oh, you know, like you might think that thing, um, you, you might think that they do this because they love you, but they're actually just trying to control you, right? You're trying to put like the person that you're isolating from them from in like the worst light possible, which is like, which is pretty much what this conversation is, right? Like, oh, that's why Disney doesn't say it around you. Like he doesn't say it around people who would get offended by it. That's why he doesn't say it around you, right? right. He wouldn't, he, would he use the N word or the hard R around you while he's talking about someyone? No, because yeah. he understands that like, because he understands that like it's bad. <laughs> because it ultimately, no matter what. Nice one. You're being super charitable, um, saying he's not aware of it. Well, the reality is, is that when a lot of people engage in these types of like uh, manipulation tactics, they don't actually know they're doing it. Um, very rare are these people that are like this. Very rare are people that are like this are like, um, I'm going to engage in this form of like isolation. I'm gonna try to take this, like people don't usually think about it. They just kind of like do things because it kind of works, right? Like, yeah. Let's see, oh, another instance, instance from Hassan's talk with Trax where he says the N-word in certain contexts is fine. Oh, well, what if I'm reading Tom Sawyer? And it's like, okay. It's reading a book, see? In, in certain contexts, like it's, uh, it's he's too scared to broach the humor subject here, right? He will. I, I wonder if he does. I don't think he does. But but we'll keep listening. Maybe someone hasn't. All right, but this is not that, right? Like right. this is not that. This is you understanding one, establishing that you understand that this is not a good word to say around uh, in public, and it's not a good word to say around specific people that might take offense to it. Here's Hassan giving his take before you join the Mindways podcast. Don't Bear arms, but you know exactly what I fucking mean. They're having conversations. The worst part about Destiny saying that N word in private is, to is him having to defend it in public racist to his that she audience might not have and dunking so, on fucking black people who he's triggering first one that to make it seem like they're being uh, irrational. Or, 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 she That's the worst part about this entire thing from my point of view and from the point of view of most people on the left. I don't give a fuck what Destiny says in the private, okay? I'm show the contestants has the cow, sheep, and fish eyes. There was a black Okay, so so far we've gotten it's okay to read it as part of history, it's okay to read it as part of Tom Sawyer. Let's let's go and watch. What is his full opinion when it's just whitey to whitey? What is he actually like comfortable admitting? Let's find out.
conversation, okay? Just fucking own it. Don't run Bernie from Sanders it. Just own it. Yep, I'm, that's I'm right. The Bernie Sanders of saying the N-word. Amen, brother. That's exactly okay. where I'm at right now, okay? Just now, own your position. Instead of, instead of crying about or trying to figure out what my audience is going to say, mm -hmm. I've already told you what my personal position is. Okay. I don't personally say it because I think it's offensive. Cool. I don't personally quote the N-word. That's fine. But no one asked what you what you personally did, though. I don't know why you're bringing it up. It, but if someone else is doing it in the mm -hmm. privacy of their own conversation with another person, there are specific contexts in which you could probably say the N-word. Cool, that is that's my, point. my position, is literally. Oh, Holy I shit. Don't. Okay, so technically this could still be just reading history or 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 um, quoting like Tom Sawyer. Um, we can go by earlier in this, I'm too lazy to search through the whole conversation, but you can go by earlier where he also like says like, okay, like maybe for some humor it's okay. But he'll never admit that when he's talking to a black person, only when he's talking to me. I don't know if you got the clip yet, but I went back and got the clip where you guys agreed on the jokes. I'm sorry, I wasn't listening. Can you say that again? You said <laughs> that in specific contexts, it's okay to say like a racial joke. And then you said, and I quote, retelling of a specific joke is acceptable. So if I retell a joke from like the Chappelle show or the Chris Rock show and it has the N word in it as a white person in a private setting, is that okay? I guess it depends on the context. It depends on additional context. What like other context? Who's saying it? Are they a race person? Things that you also, you and I both agree on, but uh, that are important, right? Like you agree on this, right? Like you, yeah. you said that you would have to check beforehand before you yeah. make a, a so statement about like a racist statement around some other people, or you try to be as polite as possible and don't say it around specific people that you yeah. know will take offense to it. So you like agree on my position? Or try hex. Listen, I agree all the way up to this point. Oh, then, then we're done. Then we agree on everything. As soon as you, oh, I'm sorry, I wasn't. But as soon as you defend it, poet, yeah. So yeah, we do agree. Okay, we're done. Okay, can we be done? I'm done. We're good. It was in your Twitch chat saying um, they want to chat. I know it's really, really hard if you're not using they, them pronouns. I have a lot of slip-ups as well, but they prefer to go by they or them. Is it offensive to describe her as female passing? Um, so let's say that you had a trans woman um, who was um, so born with the um, sex organs of a male and they were presenting as a woman. Let's say that they weren't quite like the, the gender expression or in main society, they weren't passing as a woman. You would never say to a trans woman, hey, you're male passing. That's like probably one of the most offensive things you could say <laughs> to a trans person, like uh, about, um, yeah. Because oftentimes like, um, should I say oftentimes, um, the, the dysphoria that you can experience as being a trans person is usually tied into the disconnect between like your, your gender expression versus like the internal view that you have of yourself. So when you say like, um, so when you say, hey, you're passing as something that you're not, you're like, literally hammering onto the dysphoria, like in the most aggressive way possible without realizing it. <clears throat> we use passing for people who are very white, not for gender generally, yeah. I mean, like obviously for trans people, you know, you can have surgeries or hormone therapy and whatnot to become passing, but like talking about like the degrees to which somebody is passing can oftentimes like just evokes like very, very, very negative feelings though. Do you have dysphoria when you're non-binary though? I legit don't understand much about it. Um, I, not at all. I actually, ha I don't understand um, non-binary stuff much at all. Um, but yeah, you would say that they, I, well, I guess you could have dysphoria as a non-binary. I just don't understand because I'm always used to thinking of um, gender spectrum as, as ranging from masculine to feminine. But yeah, non-binary person can be dysphoric for sure. As in like whatever their expression is, it's not something that aligns with what's going on in their brain. <clears throat> non-binary people do not require dysphoria. Well, so, this is a debate in the trans community between trans medicalists and trans people at large, I guess, um, is whether or not you require dysphoria to be considered a trans person. I think the prevailing opinion is you don't require dysphoria to be a trans person, but some, um, but some trans people kind of gatekeep the issue and say, hold on, you don't have dysphoria, you're fucking faking it. Um, which is, oof, that, the, these are like, these are very complicated and nuanced topics to debate, um, and even the trans community. Although, to be clear, that that position that you require dysphoria to be trans is, in, to my understanding, is a minority position. That's more of like an extremist position that's pushed. However, and also that position is weird because it gets a little turfy. Um, there are people called um, trans exclusionary radical feminists and gatekeeping a trans experience kind of like plays into their narrative, which is that trans people don't exist at all. Um, it, uh, with a little bit more complicated stuff that trans people are just there trying to astroturf to become a woman to get um, some kind of social credit. Uh, th that's like a whole other, oof, that, there's like, all of those issues are really, really complicated. <laughs> the only reason dysphoria occurs is because of social norms. So like if we lived in a more trans friendly culture, the dysphoria wouldn't occur. So <clears throat> that, while that might be true, 
you have to be very careful going down that road um, because it can lead to like invalidating a trans experience very quickly. Um, so for instance, um, my conversation that I had with Natalie, I think she said that if we lived in a radically different society, it is possible maybe that um, that she wouldn't feel like she needed to be trans or needed to transition, uh, but that would be possible. However, the problem with making that concession or, or making that argument is that very quickly you say, oh, <laughs> trans shit isn't real. You're just upset about how society is. Like, just like get over it. Or just like kind of like think about it differently in your head, bro. Like, it's not like it's like in your brain or anything. Like, it's just society, bro. Like, that you can jump very quickly from, from A to B there, which is what you have to be careful about. Isn't this post hoc rationalization? Well, like, what, the problem is that, like, people don't realize how powerful environment is. When you say this is environmental, people think, ah, you can change your mind on it. So, for instance, it is entirely possible. I don't know where the, where the scientific literature is on this. To my understanding, though, it is possible that being gay is triggered by some environmental thing. But that environmental thing might occur incredibly early in your development, like before you're like one or two years old. So like, but if you make that concession, like, oh, like this particular thing that we consider innate is um, we, we like when people say innate, they think genetic, right? So if you say like, oh, well, being gay might be triggered by environmental things, people are like, oh, huh, well, then if you're 25, and you're gay, just change your mind. It's like, well, no, that's not how that works. You know, um, just because something might be um, might be created through environmental means doesn't mean you can just think your way out of it. Um, and, and people make that mistake a lot where they think like, oh, if something is innate to a person or whatever, it must be genetic and completely unchangeable. Or if something is environmental, oh, well, then at any point in time, you should be able to change it. You know, if that is the case, though, then why not attempt to shape society into a hypothetical society rather than accommodate incorrect theories? Well, there are no incorrect theories being. Um, let me um, let me put it this way. Let's say that we lived in a society where people had horns, okay? Let's say that 2% of the population were just born without horns, okay? Now, in a perfect society, everybody, um, everybody would be chill with everybody, okay? He said the meme. Wait, which meme? Oh, we live in a society? Okay, sorry. Um, in, now, in a perfect world, everybody would love everybody. We'd all be chill. Whether you had horns or not, that'd be fine, okay? However, we live in a society... There, oh, that's what I said. Okay. We live in a society where if you don't have horns, people fucking hate you. And you feel like shit. Because, like, fuck, I don't have horns. I don't fit in at all. Like, this is horrible. Like, I, f I wish I had horns. Like, I wish I would have been born with them. Like, fuck. Like, it just, my life sucks now. Well, let's say that what we say is, like, okay, there's two things that could happen. One, um, we could get, like, um, HRT. No. Yeah. Not HRT. HRS. Horn reassignment surgery. Okay. Where we can give, where we can give horns to people that don't have horns. Okay, and when we do that, now they feel like they fit into society better. So it's like, oh, whew, I have a fucking horn. Everybody else has a horn. Everything is all good. Thank God. Okay, but you would never say to those people, well, listen, hey, instead of like doing something to alleviate the problems, the horn dysphoria that you have right now, maybe you should just change all of society. Because like, oh, fuck, what the fuck? We're not going to change all of society every time. Like, you're basically condemning that 2% of hornless people to live in a fuck society for their whole lives um, because the society is not going to change that radically over even a single lifetime, you know? Oh, this guy actually messaged me to chat. Should I actually chat with him? The serfs. Yo, Destiny, I hope you are good. I really have been wanting to talk to you about how do you deal with being a less emotional cold than what is normal? I have been really struggling with this since I don't mean harm, but it's just like a thing I have. Um, I don't know, dude. Just be chill. Whether you're emotionally cold or not, you have to understand how other people feel, okay? Um, I feel like I already know like how this whole video plays out it's 15 minutes like I, I and i could be wrong but like i already know like the first pushback most of these people are going to give and that's oh no we don't talk to other people that often like this is actually like all invented like we don't actually talk to people or have meetings or like chat with each other that often like it's only happened like once or twice like i think that's going to be like the <clears throat> that's going to be the first thing um and then the second thing is going to be probably small concessions where it's like yeah i do think that like corman diet Corman died? Cormantine? Was like a little bit, like maybe a little bit too aggressive, but it's because he was really emotional. It's because it's a hard topic and because you are like really aggressive and you played into it a lot and caused a lot of it to happen as well or something like that. That's like, that's my guess on like how this. I'm happy to be included. I, thank you. It makes me feel special. I, I, I did, I think I got off very easy compared to everyone else. Everyone else got like full on essays. Uh, I, I just have this little teeny paragraph here. Uh, I don't know if you can see it on the screen, but. I'll just make it bigger. The Surf's TV. This guy has been a snaky piece of shit to me by sniping with random shitty comments about me in the past, but I let it slide because I figure he's just memeing to fit in with friends. 
Uh, let's see how he responds after everything we've witnessed to a pretty basic question. I essentially ask, do you think Cormantine made a good faith approach to this conversation? He responds by saying, I was acting in bad faith by being condescending and calling him stupid. He, he says he was here for the whole three hours and apparently never heard Cormantine do it. This is what I mean when I say these people are spineless fucks with zero conviction. Hell it's incredibly yeah. frustrating to have all these people in, in a call gaslighting the fuck out of me while I'm trying to navigate a pretty brutal discussion with multiple people attacking me and other cowards jumping into the middle of the fight to call in as well. Hassan, uh, all making claims that uh, what had happened didn't actually happen. So yeah, I'm going to address these. Uh, and um, you know, he's he's provided links. There's links to each thing. So the first one is uh, the snaky piece of shit sniping me with random shitty comments. So oh, he's going to say, well, this was XQC. It wasn't me. I wish I had more clips. I already know that's how he's going to sound. I was like, oh well, yeah, I was kind of chuckling along because I thought it was funny, but I wasn't meaning anything bad by it. But he has made comments about me with like Ben Burgess and shit, like where he's always involved in like stuff like that. F I should have found better clips. I already know that's how he's going to respond to this. Weird to see what the random shitty comment is. <laughs> I, I don't know if they're still on the board, but you might have noticed there was a little purple uh, category called the PPC. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. The so the leader of the PPC, his name is Maxime Bernier. He was supposed to be the leader of the Conservative Party. He lost by 1% of the vote, and he is hardcore racist. That's basically our new far-right nationalist party. Yeah, no, I, I know. I, I watched the debates. He was talking about how, like, he tried to bring... He's like Andrew Yang, but with immigration. Like, he tried... You know oh, how Andrew yeah. Yang says, like, <laughs> he, his and, answer to everything like a is $1,000? He's yeah. a French destiny. <laughs> Oh, shit, he says that he says the n-word in private it's okay <laughs> this guy does bernie does so the snipe there was me laughing at a joke someone else had made um and mm -hmm. yeah i fucking laughed at it i i thought it was a funny joke um i like i i could have helped you out here there's probably way better clips of me you know taking snipes oh uh, shit okay oh hey amen at least he admits it i'm okay with that and I, I, I've done that all over the place. First off, uh, I'm just like a goofy, silly uh, dude, all right? I laugh at a ton of shit. I love I love laughter. Uh, it's probably my favorite thing. And a lot of what I do, uh, a lot of the time, if I'm React uh, as the kids, as the Zoomers like to say, React ending on this platform, uh, yeah, I'll watch clips or I'll listen to people and I'll probably laugh my face off. Uh, there's tons of clips of me laughing my face off at Asan. There's a fuck ton of clips of me laughing my face off at myself, usually in embarrassment. Uh, it's it's what I like to do. I like, I like to laugh. At, at goofy silly stuff uh i was going through uh destiny's reddit yesterday uh the reddit thread and i was laughing my ass off the shit in there i was going through hassan's reddit thread and i was laughing uh my ass off of the shit in there uh that's kind of what i do but this this isn't what i would consider a snipe like i i didn't come on the show and i was like by the way hassan have you heard of this destiny guy because i got a score to settle yeah he's a bit of a scumbag no i was just like uh, i laughed at a joke that someone else made um but like i said uh, I'm not saying I'm above it. Uh, I have laughed at, at clips of, of Destiny before, and uh, I have laughed at, at the clips that people sent me, uh, and I will continue to do so, because laughing's awesome, and we should all laugh more. That's all I can really say about that. Uh, in terms of being two-faced about it, though, like, I'll, I'll be honest, I... I'm, I am probably, uh, well, there's, okay, this is just going to be hyperbolic, okay, I'm not just going to make a, a blank statement, but I, for a very, very long time, was a, a Destiny defender. I was one of the people who, when everyone else was beefing, would, like, all of the left was collectively beefing with Destiny on Twitter, I was the one who was constantly saying, yes, but, uh, you know, uh, these are maybe some shitty takes about, you know, workers being stupid, um, but I think it's, it's, a lot of it's to get, you know, it's even when I had a conversation with him on his Twitter, or sorry, on his uh, on his Twitch when he uh, he let me call in, I was like, yeah, I mean, um, you know, th some of the things you do are probably to get more reactions out of people, right? Like, you correct me if I'm wrong, but I've never outright uh, made a statement where it's just like you are X and I hate you or something like that. Like that's, that's, uh, that's what I consider sniping that this is more just, I, so like, I don't consider this, um, hmm, how, how much into the weeds do you want to go with this? Like, I think this is kind of, I don't want to say a cowardly argument. Cause that's like too aggressive for what I want to say. I think that this is a weaselly a little bit. Like when you're like, Oh dude, like I've never said anything mean to you. I don't hate you. I never said I hate you. You know, I just like, kind of like play along with all the memes that like shits on you constantly you know it's just like a thing or whatever and it's like uh okay i don't know um i essentially asked do you think Cormantine made a good faith approach to this conversation so let's look at this that participated and knew that this was going to be a topic like literally agreed to it so i like i don't know like the fact that Cormantine and cole james cash came on and weren't able to like 
adequately advocate for their ideas is actually really disappointing because I, I really do agree with a, a huge. <laughs> he was so calm. All right, white guy. All right, white guy. He's literally no, no, no. no, 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 no the question. I'm super curious because even though like you talk shit about me, whatever, I do respect you. I think you're cool. Okay, even if you fucking talk shit about me, right? Do you really think that that guy like randomly interjecting up until this point? Also, to be clear. I don't think I've ever blatantly hated the Surf's TV. And up until this point, like, I just said it. Like, I think you're cool. Like, you're a pretty cool dude. I think he is a pretty cool dude. Well, I did. But, like, this answer made me, like, hardcore reconsider that. Um, so one thing that, um, this is, like, I'm sorry. This is, maybe this is self-evident. Um, you don't, you never really know what a person is thinking. All you have are a collection of actions. And then from those actions, you have to work backwards to piece together what you think exists in their mind, but you never actually know. Right. So you, you kind of have like a Schrodinger's box of like, do you hate me? Do you not hate me? Do you like me? Do you not like me based on some actions? It could like bend either way. Right. So like questions like this are how we collapse the wave function. Okay. A question like this is a direct observation of like an internal mind state. Okay. Hey, did you think this argument was in good faith or not? The answer is, well, no, maybe it wasn't. It's was like, okay, yeah. So like everything else kind of fits. Like he just kind of like memes and jokes, but he's like a cold dude. He understands what's going on. When he's like, no, that guy didn't make any good. I was like, oh, okay, hold on. I think you probably fucking hate me then. Um, I, or, or, or like have a very negative opinion, I guess. That, that This question was really important for me to kind of like assess that. You don't have the education to talk about this. You don't know what you're talking about. I don't think you, you think that that's like a good faith way to approach a conversation. I think a bad faith way was just to constantly tell him that he was dumb and stupid. You know, I only did that after so he was literally telling that's me. He was literally, man. so you're not going to call him out on it, but you are going to call me out on doing it after he was doing it to me. After he was doing it to you. I, I was here for the whole three hours. Like, I heard, you didn't I heard hear him do that to me at all? And over. You didn't hear him like, do that to me at all? He might have said it once at the start. No, sorry. Okay. Right, dude, what, what you Never mind. I'm done. Okay, I, don't okay, okay. I don't care. I don't give a fuck. Participated and knew that this. First off, fuck. I hate the sound of this. It's like. <laughs> I sound like I'm the only robot in the room. That sucks. <laughs> it's just you lose so much authority, you know, when your voice doesn't come across properly. Like, I really want to be able to use this microphone in the next little uh, kerfuffle that any of us have with each other. Um, I, like... Uh, what, okay, so what did you say at the start of that? Uh, the, that um, uh, I, I know you take snipes at me, or I, I know you make fun of me. Um, like, uh, don't we all make fun of each other, but, like, in, in a lighthearted way? Isn't that, isn't that kind of like... Uh... No, I don't agree with this. I mean, I guess you can. Here is, like, one phenomenon that I noticed. Um, I don't know if this is a fault of the victim or if it's, a, or if it's a, a mistake of people that are parallel to the attacker. So this is a very common thing that I notice is um, one time. So, like, if this thing right here, if this is me, right, um, one thing that will happen sometimes is I will get, like, some people that will, like, aggressively attack me. Um, so this might be maybe we'll say this is like Bad Bunny and Quarantine, right? Where people will aggressively like big comments like abuser, uh, you know, makes fun of me for fucking sex or whatever. Or, you know, says I'm a fucking pedophile or like big, like, you know, racist, horrible piece of shit, hates, blah, 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 right? Big attacks. And then what happens is, is these people will be surrounded by these smaller dudes that are like part of the friend group. Now, these smaller guys will never ever... Um, will never actually take, um, will never actually levy any of these big insults themselves, but they'll always kind of be in the background laugh, laughing. Like, it's all like kind of like funny for these guys. Like, ha, 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 ha. Um, but any time I get into, for me, what it feels like when you're kind of like, the, I'm, I use the word victim here, when, when you're the defender, I guess, in, in this scenario, it, this is, this, there's like a screen here almost, and it feels like these attacks just come from everybody. Um, so it can be kind of frustrating sometimes because when you get into a one-on-one -on -one call or chat with any of these people, I was like, whoa, I've never said like that. I've never said like this thing. That's ne that never happens, dude. Like, don't attribute that to me. That's not fair. And then like, it, you feel like you, you almost feel gaslit. Like, well, wait, hold on. Like, fuck. But like what's actually happening here, like the, the actual analysis is they're kind of like orbiting these larger attackers and they always kind of like hang in the back when they laugh at like jokes and blah, 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 blah. And then whenever you get them in a one-on-one, -on -one, they'll disavow everything the attackers say and they'll be like, whoa, dude, I never say stuff like that and then they'll go right back to like orbiting them being in the calls with them being in the groups with them and then kind of like laughing at the other jokes and it feels really mindfucky um i don't know if 
I don't know if I'm supposed to do a better job at interpreting like where the attacks come from. Like, okay, I understand you're not saying this, but like your two friends here are 100% doing this. Or I don't know if it's on them, if I should be telling them like, hey, if you don't like these things, maybe you should fucking speak up instead of just like implicitly endorsing it by standing around laughing at it. I don't know who the responsibility lies on there. Obviously, my, my, um, my prerogative, um, <clears throat> I, I'm incentivized to say, well, these guys need to clean up their act because it's more work for them and less work for me. But, yeah, I'm not sure. Uh, Twitch, like, we all make goofy jokes about each other. Like, I, I overheard... Uh... Like, this stuff is, like, that's one thing. You can say that you all make goofy jokes, and you do. But then a lot of you also say, like, oh, well, I'm super racist, I'm super transphobic, I'm super sexist. Like, and there are, when it all gets packaged together, right? Like, some fucking CDO on Wall Street, when all those securities get thrown in together, it kind of feels like one big fucking thing sometimes, you know? He's admitting what you wanted, give him a break. Yeah, kind of, okay? But, like, this is one of the things that I said before, right? One thing that I don't like, one thing that drives me crazy, is when people recognize mistakes after the fact. Because it doesn't mean anything. It doesn't, I don't care about it. It doesn't say anything about your character, right? Like, having strong character is to be able to identify it as it's happening and to say something as it happens, is what I'm saying, right? So, like, yeah, like, anybody can go back afterwards. Like, I would expect him to go back and have to admit this after I've made, like, a seven-hour fucking post and called him out in front of, like, 20,000 people. Sure. Do you not care if you recognize it later? No, I actually don't. I don't care at all. I actually don't. I don't care at all. What are you saying? What I'm saying is that if I'm in a conversation with five people and four of them are dogpiling some person and then afterwards they're like, man, we shouldn't have done that. Oh, okay. I don't care. Don't really give a fuck. I don't care about that analysis. We'll see what you do next time. That's what I care about. Um, bad take? Yeah, sure. You can say it's a bad take. And I understand. I don't expect most people to agree with this. Um, I'm at a stage in my life, and I've said this before, um, and I'll say it again. I don't care what people say. I care how people act. I, I give so little credence or credibility to what somebody says to me until I see how they act in a certain situation. I just don't care because people say a lot of things. People talk a lot. And they say a lot of things about what they would do, how they would act, blah, 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 blah. Um, but if you don't step up when you're actually called to, then everything you say means nothing to me. I don't give a fuck about it. I don't care how, how good or bad you thought something was after the fact. Because if you didn't stand up when it was happening, then fuck it. What does act mean? Act means, so like, when I see somebody getting dogpiled, I'll, I'm, I'm trying to, I don't know if it's good to use me as, as a personal example, so I can say, like, well, this is what it is in practice, or if it sounds more like I'm sucking myself off, I'm not sure. But, like, um, so, like, when I'm on a podcast and I see somebody getting dogpiled, and then I try to, like, stick up for the person, I'm like, hey, like, well, maybe this, or blah, 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 blah. So I do it sometimes for the conservatives on the Raj Royale, or I do it when I feel, feel like people are getting spoken over a lot. I would say, like, that's an example of, like, hey, like, this is, like, standing up for somebody when it's happening. If I were to say after the fact, like, oh, like, you know, like, this is kind of shit. Like, you know, blah, 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 blah. Oh, actually, I can give an example of a failing. Um, here's, a, here's an area where I fucked up. So <clears throat> when I was on the, uh, when I was talking to Nova, okay, um, about the leaked DM drama, okay, I did some really good things and I did some really bad things. A really good thing with Nova was I told her beforehand, hey, if you get uncomfortable talking about anything or if you don't want to go in about anything, then we can kind of like back off and do something different. Like, that's fine. Um, when Ms. Kiff brought out, like, the zucchini or whatever and was, like, making fun of her for her, like, camp past or whatever, like, I paused my stream and was like, hey, this is really fucking disgusting that people would, like, do something like this. That's really gross. That's good. Um, one thing that happened, though, was identif I identified, I think, that Tricky was, like, genuinely upset about everything, and I should have stopped that conversation right there when I noticed it. Um, I made the observation that, like, I think that Tricky is, like, genuinely upset, but I think a stronger move or a better move would have been to stop that conversation right there rather than talking about it afterwards, I think. Um, so that's, like, an example of, like, some good actions, some bad actions. Um, yeah. I just, I don't really like, um, it's very, very, very easy at, after the matter of a fact to be like, oh, well, this is what I should have done. Oh, I should have done that. I should have done that. But like, and maybe it's because I'm 30 or maybe it's because I'm very cynical. I know a lot of people that are 2020 hindsight warriors. These people are the best human beings in the world if they just had a two hour time machine. These people are the most moral and righteous people in the world if they could just go back a few hours and replay everything again. But what happens is, is they make the same mistakes over and over and over again. They keep saying, I could have done that. I could have changed that. I should have done that. I just don't really care. It all depends on how you act in the actual moment. That's how I, that's why I don't really care when people are like, oh, like, yeah. I remember if it was in, in, but it's entirely possible as well. It's entirely possible that Lance, um, 
in the next conversation that something like this happens where he's like, hey, like, this is really shitty, like, you're dogpiling. Like, maybe this level of introspection or whatever does make it. And then if that happens, then I'm like, oh, that's really cool. I give him a lot of credit for that. But, like, I give you credit for saying things on a scale from, like, 1 to 10. And, like, that's on, like, a 1,000-point scale where your actions are rated, right? Talk is cheap. What if he straight up didn't realize it while it was happening? Um, then that's a measure of your character. Like, being considerate of other people, that's important. There's a lot of guys that, like, are really rapey around women, not because they're rapists, but because they're really inconsiderate. They don't realize what's happening, right? Like, if I bring a girl over and we're hanging out, like— I should be able to just sit next to her and like start touching her and ask her if she wants to have sex. Like, I don't see the problem, right? Like, that's usually not a guy thinking like, I'm going to rape a fucking girl. Usually it's just a person being like really inconsiderate and be like, oh, I wonder if this would be like really uncomfortable for this person or if this person puts the person in a spot Think that makes it really hard for them. Throughout this whole thing, but um, really hard for them to say no, right? Like, you can't really use the excuse like, oh, like, well, I just wasn't thinking about that person at all. Like, okay. I mean, like, that's just as much a measure of your character as anything else. Um, think you could have been more empathetic throughout this whole thing, but hope you've seen the worst. Yeah, I mean, like this is hopefully we're like winding down now, right? After a few days. Okay, so this is the first time. Um, this is the first moment in the debate. Uh, it's about the hour and fifty nine minute where the the name calling, the stupid name calling starts, and it does start from from Cormentine. They are because you're you're the examples that you use in your story was literally like oh like uh um I you know black people are lazy they're whatever racial this wasn't the first time it started but okay or you said or whatever that was your example okay. like that's not what the fuck I'm saying I'm like quoting like the boondocks or some shit okay. like, calling black people literally the literally talking okay. about okay. slurs bro um can, can I not a response say to anything I said. like do I, I don't need to, I don't need to mind meld with you to wait, find wait, out what it is that you're actually saying to wait, people in your wait, private wait, wait, life hold on. to apply. Wait, 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 I swear to god I'm sorry for interrupting you okay do you think that all do you think that every single use of the slur is the same when you say literally talking about slurs do you think that if one guy like let's say you know you can still think it's racist that's fine but if one guy is so like, his response well, earlier was we're literally talking about slurs like okay well wait is it all the same quoting like a Dave Chappelle skit and another guy and then another guy is saying like I hate all n words do you think that the use of the n word there is the exact same that a slur is a slur and it means the same thing that what a stupid question to ask. I, that's, <laughs> that's what I fucking not. thought. All right. Go. So that's it right there. First moment. Um, I don't know if I would agree that that's the first moment. Cormentine had already started insulting people. And I cited all this like before the fucking um, before we'd even gotten into this topic. But OK. This is uh, if people are going to be like, these are semantics or it's pedantic of you to differentiate these two things. I still think. It's oh, no. Is he going to say, well, he didn't say Destiny was stupid. He just said it was a stupid question. He's not going that road, is he? Oh, no. To differentiate these two things, I still think it's important, but this is basically in relation to what I was going off when I, when I spoke oh, no. to at the very end of this. Oh, no. Which is that there is a difference between saying, you are stupid, you are dumb, and that question was dumb. This is gaslighting 101, 100%. This is a boyfriend telling his girlfriend when the girlfriend is like, um, <clears throat> um, what, what would the question be? Like, um, did you guys, ha did you have sex with that girl? And the boyfriend's like, no, we didn't. And the girl's like, okay, I trust you. And then later on, it comes out that like the girl blew the guy and the guy's like, whoa, whoa, whoa. You asked if we had sex, baby. It was just a blowjob. We didn't actually fuck each other. You just asked if we had sex. I'm not lying to you. Like this is gaslighting 101. Um, you can make an argument that you are inferring that, uh, the person may be dumb or stupid based on- You could make an argument inferring. On you stating that that is a dumb or stupid question, but there is a difference between those two things. That's not a dumb question. He's got a giant fucking script that he can read off and he can't fucking deviate from it. Are you gonna- question for you, homie. Are you- Listen, how- how are, you, how are you gonna debate? Hang on, stop everyone, stop talking. How are you gonna debate me on my own fucking humanity? My I'm humanity, saying that's a bro. We're not talking about your fucking humanity. We're not- Uh... Never actually studied this stuff, so you can't understand what- so yeah, so that was that was the very first moment, and yes, there's no question that Cormentine did say that to Destiny, um, but he said that is a stupid question. All right, and as we go on later, this is what is it? Okay, so this is later on in that when the those words start being used quite frequently. I don't think that just saying that I you say can disagree you all you like. I cited you information that shows you didn't cite shit. You have no fucking idea what the fuck you're citing. Oh my god! You're stupid you, to read the fucking cited you 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 so Yeah. Um, when was the last clip? Now here, I didn't technically say that Cormentine was stupid. I said he was too stupid to read the site. Now that was actually a very specific attack, saying that he just didn't know how to read the specific source that he cited me. I didn't actually say that he was wholly stupid as a person. Like, come on, dude. Do it. Both of these guys have been... 
The first instance is when Death he's actually has like the the clip saved of like where I like hit back at Cormantine. Unreal, dude. Destiny, that was right after you'd read his study out loud because it didn't say what he said. It said, yeah. Destiny tried to comment on Canada's oil and Cormantine tells Destiny that Destiny is uneducated on the matter uh, so that he shouldn't talk. Oh, okay, well, that's even better then. Um, oof, now I gotta go all the way back to find that. Um, but yeah, if, if that is the case, uh, by the way, you can send me that clip, uh, Corrupt Paranoia. But yeah, if that is the case, then yes, that is again stating that you as an individual are uneducated on this matter. It's not... <laughs> Do you, I'm actually super curious if I can have a conversation with him and I could actually, I wonder if I can move his opinion on this. Oh my God. Saying that you are uneducated. You're like, you understand the difference between those two things. And that's what I was basing what I stated at the very Wait. end. Wait, oh no, he just used the meme argument that I just made. It's like a joke. He's not saying that you're uneducated. Just that you're uneducated on the manner. Well then fine. I wasn't saying that he was wholly stupid. He was just stupid about the study that he cited. But yeah, if that is the case, then yes, that is again stating that you as an individual are uneducated on this matter. It's not saying that you are uneducated. <laughs> you under <laughs> Obviously, I mean, fuck, uh, temperatures were high. Everyone was super, super angry. I wonder why. Being upset by the very end of this, uh, you know. How does Destiny predict every single thing this guy's going to say? I know I was a really shit fucking person in my early 20s. So like I know like all like the uh, like the emotionally abusive and manipulative tactics. Like all of it is like pretty simple hu basic human psychology. Like how humans like act and respond and like the bullshit excuses that we make for things. Like all of this is like super standard. Like this is like all of this falls under like gaslighting 101. Like it's super 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 common. Um where um <clears throat> here here is like another way that um here's another thing that happens. Um okay. Um, okay, hold on. Let me let's do like a really general thing. When we speak, we actually communicate so many things that aren't said in language that have to do with something specific. Now, hold on. Okay, when I say that, you think like, oh yeah, body language, blah blah blah. No, no, no. I just mean by virtue of the sentences themselves. There is a lot that happens um, in a, in a in a sentence that you don't see. So, for instance, if I say something like, if I say to somebody, hey, do you want to go to Wendy's? And they're like, yeah. Um, I'm not actually asking that at all. Like. What I'm actually asking is, is um, I would like to go with you to Wendy's and I'm asking you if you, um, if I can take you there right now or something like that. Or there's even more like subtext implied there, but there is a lot going on there. It's not just actually like, oh, do you want to go to Wendy's? Because the person could just say, yes, I do. And then nothing happens, right? And it's like, oh, like there are, um, there's a, there's a language or there's a, there's a name for this, um, ha having to do with linguistics. I don't remember. Im oh, implicature. Implicature might be the, might be what I'm thinking of, but there is a lot that goes on with sentences. Um, sometimes what people do when they're, another common thing, if somebody's trying to gaslight you, right, is like, this might be like a statement that you make. And then this is all of the implicature that generally goes along with it. Um, oftentimes, um, these two things are, are taken and, and you experience them together like as a person But when somebody's trying to gas at you, they will try to cut off all of this implicature and Then they will um and, and then they'll cut that off and say wait. Well, hold on. I just meant this so like um Fuck I wish I had examples offhand of this. Here's something that would be like really really common or whatever um, maybe like um, uh, it's really hard to think of examples. Maybe you get cheating is usually the most easy way because like gaslighting usually comes in, involved in like relationships and stuff like exploitative relationships. Um, isn't the problem that sometimes you can't tell what they really meant and they weren't aware of what was implied? Well, the problem is oh wait actually wait 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 we, we I guess we can use the quarantine example exactly. When quarantine says you're not educated enough to talk about this, the implicature there is that like you're saying I'm not educated, which and not even that you're usually going farther. You're saying I'm an idiot. Generally, that's what's that's what 99% of people would hear that as if somebody in the middle of a conversation is like, you're not educated enough to talk about this. What, what they're really saying is like, you're a fucking idiot. And everybody hears that. And then when you pull out and you try to call them out on that later, you're like, hey, dude, like, what the fuck? Like, you're insulting me. And then somebody like the Serbs will come by and be like, well, hold on, actually. OK, all he merely stated was that you were uneducated on this very particular manner. You didn't say you were uneducated, period, or that you were stupid. <laughs> That's even farther removed, right? People will try to act like we, we process language as like literal code, right? People turn into fucking computer programmers, okay? Literal, comp they turn into compilers when they wanna defend their friends. Like, okay, 
Hold on, all right? Now, when this person said this thing, if we break down the exact syntactic reference A used, okay? No. If we break down the exact syntax of what, what verb refers to what noun exactly, then actually we can see that he was actually being far less um, harsh than what you claim. It's like, we don't process language like that, bro. Like, we, there's very clearly, like, a message being sent here that's, like, pretty obvious to most people. You can't try to divorce, you know, what was actually said um, from, like, the actual context that is, of course, being carried with it to try to defend that statement. Um, yeah, I don't know. Fuck. I, I should write down, like, examples of this. There's a lot of, like, this is, all of this is, like, really good stuff to know for, like, human psychology. Like, how to navigate conversations, how to make sure other people aren't, like, leading you around in a conversation in a disingenuous way. Um, Yeah. Clearly, I was. I wanted to leave after the first, you know, thirty or forty minutes of this conversation because, like, I did not feel comfortable with it. This is another one, like this kind of like hindsight stuff. Like, I just don't give any credit for. It. Like, oh, I wanted to leave. Well, why didn't you? What was keeping you there? I did not feel comfortable with it. Uh, not just be, not because of the topic matter, but just because of how heated everything was. Like, I didn't think any of us were having an intellectual uh, conversation. I thought it was just people uh, yelling at each other, and we weren't really covering any ground. Um, but again, uh, you know, that for the first half of it, no question that, um, you know, Destiny was getting uh, attacked uh, heavily. And then, in my opinion, in the second half of this entire experience, Quarantine was getting very, very attacked heavily, uh, both by Destiny and by Mindwaves, the host of the event. Um, Imagine saying the moderator was attacking him. Jeez. Either way. You're welcome, buddy. That, that would be my response to, what was it? Uh, I said she asked the Cormini in good faith. He responds by saying I was acting in bad faith by condescending and calling him stupid. He says he was here for three whole hours and I never heard Cormini do it. This is what I mean when I say these people are spineless fucks. This is your conviction. Um, yeah, and again, uh, I mean, if you want to say that, if you want to state that, that's totally, totally uh, within your purview. Um, Didn't he say the other dude was calm and now he's saying the whole convo was heated and he wanted to leave? Yeah, whatever. Talk to him about it. Um, I messaged him, but I don't know if he'll respond. You should have crucified him on that domestic abuse stance. If that was you who that came out about, they would have ended your career. Yep. Amen. 100%. I can't believe that. A guy gets charged with domestic abuse, pleads it down to just breaking a cell phone, and then and then this guy is quoting what the defendant said about him. That we, Oh, well, she abused me too. Could you imagine if fucking Kavanaugh had come out and said that? Well, actually, she was pushing me for sex. People would have fucking crucified him, the Serps guy included. Set a oh, shit, I was on push and talk, talk, my bad. Way to go. Okay, I have a question, okay? Yep, yep. Um, let's say that um, let's say that a guy gets charged with, like, three counts of domestic abuse, okay? Is this about the dude who fucking, like, beat up his girlfriend? And whoa, 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 whoa! Allegedly. <laughs> Chill, okay? Those charges were dropped. Let's say that you um let's say that you you've got a person that's charged with three counts of domestic abuse, okay? Let's say that they plead guilty um to breaking a phone and they pay a two hundred fifty dollar fine and they have twelve months of probation. Would you assume that that's like probably like a plea deal or whatever or I mean you No. Like not necessarily. Mm-hmm. Because it's possible that they were only, you know, they were just charged with destruction of property in the first place. Mm -hmm. If you don't know the context and the details behind it. Okay. Is it, is that, I, I guess I don't know, like, the sentencing links. Is it, like, reasonable that, like, breaking, like, somebody's phone could get you, like, 12 months of probation? Well, I mean, I don't know what the laws are in, in this hypothetical person's home country of Canada. But, you know, in the U.S., it seems like a long time. Okay. Because that's part of what I was kind of, like, inferencing it from. That, like, if there's 12 months of probation there, it kind of sounds like that was, like, an agreement to, like, drop the other charges or whatever. Um, I don't know, yeah. like, a, what is the difference? And I don't know if Canada's different. Like, what is, like, a mischief charge for, like, breaking somebody's phone? Is that different than just, like, a destruction of property or what? You mean, like, criminal mischief? Yeah, I guess, yeah. Um, I mean, it's, again, it's, like, state by state. Mm -hmm. Like, it's degree by degree. So if it's, like, fourth degree, it's really fucking minor, right? Hmm. Okay. I, I mean, like, ultimately, one year of probation is really not that much. Sure. And it doesn't really infer that there was... Something more significant know, that was played down or whatever. Yeah, not... not net, well, I mean, it could, but it doesn't, on its face, do that, right? Sure. Okay. Like, like someone could just cop to a minor charge like that and not even bother contesting it because it's 250 fucking dollars and one year of probation or whatever. But mm -hmm. I don't know. How are you doing? How's life going? Not too bad, not too bad. How's uh, work going today? 
Uh, I left at 11.30, so... It's pretty good. 11.30? What the fuck did yeah, you do today? Yeah, I work half days on Friday. It's pretty sweet. Wow. Must be nice to be a fucking lazy motherfucker. Yeah, it's pretty good. I can't complain. I haven't unsubbed from you for being a massive racist either, so you got that well, going Well, I only hate blacks, not Asians, so it's okay, right? Well, that's not true. Come on, let's be real. <laughs> hey, whoa! Those are private... Are you taking my private conversations and making them public? Um, no comment. Thanks. Good diplomatic answer. Okay, I'm gonna go play boring games now. I love you, buddy, okay? All right, have fun. Be careful, bye. Oh, shit. Is this it? Did somebody find it? Did somebody find the meme? I started playing FTL when Destiny did, and this run actually ruined the game for me. Sure, there's quite a bit of strategy in the game, but now it seems to me a winning run is about getting insane RNG. Destiny was on an insane high roll. He rolled an absolutely unfathomable amount of scrap, so much that it's hard to believe that the game was on hard. He didn't have to use anything but tier 1 weapons, his crew got maxed out for free, got many upgrades and weapons for free, and he went against very few enemies with missiles in the early game. On top of all of that, he got the Zoltan Shield, the best upgrade in the game? Enemies getting to fire their missiles before you is a major problem that eats your scrap and Zoltan Shield removes that problem. I took four ships to the boss in the little time I've played, and those ships were what Destiny had by like the end of Sector Five. Most of the time, there just isn't enough scrap in the game to get on. Um, there just isn't enough scrap in the game on hard difficulty. I never lose crew, and the most I've had is six. I've never been able to afford good weapons, plus good defense, plus cloaking at the same time, and I've never had something like the Zoltan Shield event. I usually play all games on high level, but I guess I'm still new, and my view could be a little skewed. However, now I don't feel like playing anymore when winning the game seems to be about restarting. If you aren't rolling in dough by the end of Sector Three or Four. <laughs> <laughs> he got so mad. <laughs> Holy shit. Oh, I remember why he got so mad. I think he got really mad because I said on the final boss, after I beat the final boss, I was like, oh, that was kind of underwhelming. I thought that was going to be harder. And then I think he got like, he got super, super, super mad about that. You got insanely lucky. Most people barely hang on while the game literally rains resources on you, even in hard mode. I know better, but I almost suspect you of using mods to get way better results. We aren't making this up. Just Google FTL hard, and you'll find countless threads about the game's difficulty. Every time you got to the boss, you had everything maxed out and cloaking, which is so rare it hurts you acting like some kind of genius at this game. <laughs> to get what you had takes either godlike RNG or outright cheating with mods. <laughs> How did people get, people got so fucking mad at just me, at just me beating this game. It was unbelievable. Oh my God. I love you all very much. Okay. I'm going to sleep. Um, we'll stream tomorrow. Probably start early here. I'll host our boy Trihex. Okay. Good luck guys. It's been fun. Ripperino. Cappuccino, Papuccino, Papuccino, Mappuccino, Dappuccino, Cappuccino, Appuccino, Alpuccino, my Dudorinos. Okay. I'll see you tomorrow. Good luck guys. Have fun. Peace out. Okay. Listen guys. This is only for the early birders, okay? Ask me in two months, and I will try my hardest 